All right, guys, we'll uh, continue on with part two of our geometric sequences video uh, with the partial sums formula of a geometric sequence. Um, so the partial sum, very simple, okay, uh, for the sequence where the nth term is the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power. That means for a geometric sequence, Okay, because that's the formula we use for a geometric sequence. The sum of the nth term would be the first term times 1 minus the common ratio to the nth power over 1 minus the common ratio. Okay, This is a formula that will be given to you. Obviously, um, we'll, we'll use some notes here, but even if we were in the physical classroom, we would provide this formula for you. So as long as you can find the first term, the common ratio, and how many terms we're looking for the sum of, we should be able to use our calculator and figure out that sum. Let's put this into play. Example 4, find the sum of the first 10 terms of the geometric sequence 2, negative 6, 18, negative 54, so on and so forth. So, n is going to be 10, so we're looking for the sum of the first 10 terms, the partial sum. Uh, it says that the sequence is geometric. Let's find the common ratio. We're multiplying by negative 3, by negative 3, by negative 3. So our common ratio is negative 3. And our first term is 2. Let's remind ourselves of the formula for that sum. The first term times 1, 1 minus the common ratio to the nth power over 1 minus r. So the first term is 2. Common ratio, negative 3, to the 10th power. Now we'll put that all into our calculator here. If we put that all into our calculator, negative 29,524. Alright. Now the next part of our notes deals with an infinite series. So like, what if this question said, find the sum of the, of all the terms of the geometric sequence. The infinite amount of terms that could come from a sequence. Now, this one is very difficult for students sometimes to wrap their minds around. But I like the way we've used this example to do so. Okay. An infinite series is an expression in the form of... Now, infinite series, it kind of automatically means the sum, okay? If we use sigma notation, this is what uh, an infinite series is defined as. From the first term, basically the sum, the sum of the infinite amount of terms. Okay. The sum of the infinite amount of terms of whatever sequence we're given. Okay. So the way we're going to start off with that is, first of all, you might be thinking, like Mr. Newberger did at one point in his life when he was taught infinite series for the first time, it was very difficult for me to wrap my mind around the fact that if I continually add terms together and I never stop, which is what an infinite amount of terms would be, how could the sum of that end up with one number? And it's not necessarily that the sum ends up with one number, it's that it, it approaches and it, it, we're going to use the word converge here on, on a number, okay? Sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't, okay? Example 5 says you have a cake and you want to eat it by first eating half the cake, then eating half what remains, so you want to finish up this cake by just continually eating half of what you have, okay? So, the sum, the partial sum, would be 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 32 plus dot 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 1 over 2 to the nth power. 
2 to the nth power down below 1. This is what we would have to add if we wanted to look for any of the partial sums. Okay. This would be a geometric sequence. Okay. Each term we're multiplying by 1 half. Okay. Now the question becomes, what happens to the total amount of cake eaten as you eat more and more servings? As this um, sequence continues on, let's say forever. Okay, and, and the main question that's going to lead us to how we deal with infinite series okay, of geometric sequences is what happens to the sum as n approaches infinity. Okay, now if we think of this as one full cake and we give you a tangible way to represent the sequence, well, then it makes a lot of sense that as n approaches infinity, the sum is going to approach 1. All right. Now, in theory, it will never actually equal 1. But when we're talking about infinite series, we are talking about what the sum will approach. Okay. So this means as the gets higher, the sum is going to approach one full cake, basically, if we're using our example from above. Okay. Now consider this series. Okay, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 2 to the n minus 1. All right, is this geometric? It is. We're multiplying by 2 every time. As n, all right, as n goes to infinity, as these terms continue to increase, what's going to happen to the partial sum? Well, the partial sum's never going to stop growing. Okay, um, the sum of this one is going to go off to infinity as well. All right. Now, infinity is not something that we will say an infinite series, the sum of an infinite series, will actually equal. Okay, We'll learn that here on the next page. What's the difference between these two? Why, why could our cake example up here, um, why did that approach an actual number, whereas this sequence approaches infinity? Why don't you stop and, and think about that? And then uh, after you're done kind of thinking about it for a minute, you can uh, move forward with the notes. Well, in example five, the common ratio was one half. In this sequence down here, this infinite series, the common ratio was two. Maybe these values have something to do with why the sum of this series as it went off to infinity would approach an actual number whereas as this as these terms go off to infinity the sum would not approach an actual number it would continue to go off to infinity as well and maybe that's what you're thinking we turn to the final page of our notes and we talk about an infinite series okay so given the infinite geometric series right this means the sum from the first term sorry given the infinite geometric series and this notation would mean the sum of the first term to the infinite term so all of the terms the infinite amount of them of And remember, this is our general way we write our arith or sorry, our geometric sequence. The first term times the common ratio to, in this case, since we're using k here, the k minus one power. Okay, and that would equal the first term plus the first term times r plus the first term times r squared plus the first term times r to the third plus dot dot dot. These pluses mean we have the sums, and we're dealing with the sums here. Okay. All right, we're going to use two words, and we'll kind of refer back to our examples on the previous page. We're going to say that the infinite geometric series converges, means the infinite series sum is a number. It diverges all 
And these are two very important words for you, okay? So, if we go back a page, okay, we're going to talk about which one of these converges, which one of these diverges, okay? Think about the word converge, it means it comes together to one thing. Diverge really means it like splits off into something um, that we can't put a value on. So if we go back to the previous page, this sequence here, the one where we're dealing with the cake, we would say that this converges and that the sum would equal 1. We would say that this one diverges. And when we say that a geometric sequence diverges, we would never say what the sum of the infinite series was. Okay, we wouldn't be able to tell for the reason we saw here that this sum would go off to infinity and we can't say that the sum of a sequence equals infinity. It doesn't make sense, okay? Now maybe you guys were taking notice here that these would be important factors into whether an infinite series converges or diverges, and maybe you even thought that since this ratio was less than 1, and since this ratio was greater than 1, this series would diverge, we couldn't put a value on it, yet this series would converge, and we could put a value on that infinite series, and if that's what you were thinking, you were correct. So, uh, I kind of ran out of room for our notes here, but we'll put down at the bottom of the page, we'll put some extra notes, okay? An infinite series... converges if the absolute value of R is less than 1. It diverges if the absolute value of R is greater than 1. And that's how we deal with negative common ratios. We don't want to just say less than 1 or greater than 1. We want the absolute value to be less than 1. So, things like, for example, if R equaled 1 fourth, if R equaled negative 2 thirds, if R equaled 0 0.65, uh, or for example, a series would diverge if R was 2, if R was negative 5, if R was 7 over 6. All right. Basically, the common ratio, and the common ratio alone, will tell you whether a series converges or diverges. And then if it converges, you have to find the sum with a formula we're about to give you. If it converges, the sum of the infinite series would be the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. Very simple. All right, we've got two examples here to figure out whether it converges or diverges and a very simple formula if it does. So what we need to do if we're looking for whether it converges or diverges and then as you see if it converges only find its sum we need to find the common ratio. Okay, This is 3 over 1 the next term is 33 over 10. How do I multiply 3 over what do I multiply by to get to 33 over 10? Well it looks like I would multiply by 11 over 10 3 times 11 is 33, 1 times 10 is 10. Let's see if the next term follows suit. Multiply by 10, multiply by 11. Multiply by 10, multiply by 11. The common ratio here is 11 over 10. We need to ask ourselves whether this is greater than 1 or less than 1. It is greater than 1. This series diverges, and we do not need to find its sum. Let's do B. 7 over 1. We would multiply this by, looks like, 2 fifths. 7 times 2 is 14. 1 times 5 is 5. Let's see here. Again, multiply by 2 fifths. Again, multiply by 2 fifths. So, the common ratio is 2 fifths. The absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1, so it converges. Now, we need to find the sum using our formula. The sum of this infinite sequence would be the first term. 7 over 1 minus the common ratio of 2 fifths. Alright, let's get some common numbers. 7 over 5 over 5 minus 2 over 5, which is 7 over 3 over 5. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. The sum of this sequence, this infinite series, would be 35 over 3. And we're done.